just have an opportunity to get a quality young man who's a really good player, and it's hard. You never have enough offensive linemen. So uh, we could add him <coughs> into our mix, and uh, you know, but we felt real good about who we had too. Now he's developed and come on strong and become a real strong player, which is great. But we've got a, we've got a fair number of guys that can flat play. Did he have a quick grasp of the offense once he came? Did he come in for spring ball? Did, he did, but he, oh. but, but, but he wasn't eligible. Okay. And uh, we didn't know if we'd get him eligible. In okay. fact, he wasn't eligible until very, very shortly. Uh, well, sometime in August is when we finally got oh. word that he was eligible to play because he had an appeal with the NCAA. So, you know, in our minds, we were getting ready for next year, and then when we could play in this year, that became a bonus. The ships here to Syracuse, I was just looking at some numbers. It looks like Tommy spreads the ball around. I mean, they get like eight receivers with over 10 catches. Mm -hmm. Just talk about defending the field against yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, that's their, that's their attack. And, uh, and he's a real good football player. He throws the ball really well. I think he's a tough kid and a pretty athletic guy. Um, so, I mean, you give him an opportunity, he's going he's to distribute the ball all over the field. And I was just looking at Tristan Jackson. Big explosive player, so right. someone the secondary's got to keep an eye on. You know. He's one of the better receivers in the country. Okay. Yeah, he's certainly one of the better receivers. I mean, we got a lot of good receivers in, the, in our conference. But right. He, he's up there. He's a super, super talented guy. Yeah. How's the defense responded? I mean, they get really hammered by Clemson. Yeah. Have they been able to regroup? Because this could be one of those games where you yeah. might win a close, low scoring game. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I think. We're out here today and we've got the same practice we've been having. I mean, you know, we got into a buzzsaw as we talked about Saturday night. And uh, that team played like the number one team in the country. Um, so I think our kids understand that uh, we've got to grow and develop from that. But uh, I would anticipate that we'll come out and play, play strong. Do you anticipate like a sense of urgency from Syracuse, like almost desperation? I mean, they got to get a first win in the conference. And well, I think there's a sense of urgency by both teams. Yeah. I think that this is a rival game, and I don't think records matter in rival games. I think you throw them out the window. These are two rivalry teams that are going to play each other like it's the last game of the year. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, I think this is one of those games where all, none of that stuff matters. I mean, you're going to get, they're going to get our best shot, we're going to get their best shot, these are two teams going to go after each other. Uh, I was curious about Max. Uh, in what ways, he's always, since he was young, had like a uh, leadership gene, kind of. But how have you seen that sort of? Yeah, I mean, I think Max is a natural leader. I think um, he's a super tough guy who loves ball, and he's a, he's a take charge kind of guy. Um, sure, it's got a lot to do with the way he was raised. He's got a great dad and mom, strong. Dad was a really great football player in Michigan. And mom was a really competitive athlete. And I just think, you know, he's been raised like that. You know? And his, just on the field, have his, I mean, his responsibilities just as a player are probably the same, but do his duties as far as, you know, talking to the young guys or, or yeah. signaling them. I mean, he and Tanner Crawford are the two leaders on our football, right. our defensive team. They're not really on our team, but on our defensive team. Those two guys are the voices. And he, he preaches the same message, almost similar to you, from week to week. It's just like execution, execution. Yeah. I mean, he's not, he'll shoot you straight like, didn't play well, didn't play well. But yeah. for him, like, for, for a defense that may not be as experienced, is it valuable to have somebody who is yeah. kind of consistent over time? Yeah, I mean, he's the one guy that I think is the most consistent player on our defense, for sure. Um, I think he and Tanner Crawford are two of the more consistent guys that we play with. And, uh, you know, he, he understands what it takes. He's, he's got a lot of guys around him right now. I think it's up to nine of them that are freshmen, Richard, freshmen, or sophomores around him. And, uh, and that's, that's a lot going on. So he's, he's the anchor. I think you mentioned the word urgency. And it's, it's, a, it's a word, but... Um... Considering like where he's been throughout his career, you know, yeah. does he treat sort of, especially a season like this one, like all, all every game probably has a added significance for him just to be out there. But how have you seen him sort of a, approach each game? Like I mean, he's the same as he's been every year. I mean, you know, great players prepare the same way and they approach everything the same way. I mean, we got a chance ahead of us one game at a time. Yeah. They're all they're all winnable games ahead of us. So I mean, we have a chance to have one of the best seasons we've had here. So it starts with one game at a time, which starts here at Syracuse. So. I think our guys feel that same way. It's how do we play the best game we can possibly play on Saturday? And he's got that mindset.